Hey everybody, I know it's been a hot minute, but um, I'm about to do another Kevin off the cuff. And this time it's going to be part two of my uh, silent film uh, reviews uh, because uh, I was, it was requested, weirdly enough. Um, so I, I did, uh, I did uh, Nosferatu uh, last week. I got a really good response for that. And then uh, everybody was like, we'll do Metropolis next. And so this is my Kevin Off The Cuff uh, video for, re video review for Metropolis. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Let me tell you, this this one's a little bit more. This one's gonna be a little more complicated than than the old vampire story. I mean, it was the, the vampire story had like some stuff going on with like crazy crazy bosses and and shit like that. But this this is nothing compared to what's going on in Metropolis. Uh, now, all I gotta say is. Um, I saw I saw uh, what's no, what's called the restored version, which means that they found a bunch of uh, a bunch of old 16 millimeter film in in like a box in Buenos Aires, and just randomly, and so they um, they spliced it into the movie to like finish parts. So some of it looks a little weird, but. It, it actually, I mean, I'm actually getting a much fuller story than probably a lot of people have in the past. So, uh, I gotta say, first and foremost, this was something else. I mean, it's, what is amazing to me, alright, is that even without dial, without real sound, uh, the the ability of human beings to tell stories got so sophisticated. I mean, it was it was pretty good in 1922 with uh, with Nosferatu, but this is 1927, and suddenly it's like they have reached this sort of ability to tell a story without without real dialogue. It's just like the, it's just like this incredible thing. It's like something that you don't even realize watching today's movies. Today's movies with just crazy special effects. Well, all right, special effects I'll get to in a minute. Um, but like with their color and their and their high definition and their um, uh, sound work and all this stuff and stereophonic surround explosions and I mean you just don't realize just how really easy it is for today's movie maker to tell a story as opposed to back then when it was like they, they didn't have anything you know so anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna try to explain what Metropolis is about because I, I didn't I knew that it had something to do with that robot thing that everybody sees that looks robot that looks like C3PO except it's a chick but I didn't like have any idea what the story was about I mean I kind of had an idea it was like this dystopian future thing okay I had some idea then about what the story's about but it gets really really complicated um, basically it starts out with a with the, the, the main character well we just we get introduced to this city uh, metropolis and basically you've learned that the the workers work in this in these back-breaking things and you just see them all coming off the elevator after a shift just looking completely downtrodden and they go to their little shitty underground city um, and then the next thing you see is that you know the rich people they have this above ground place which is being run by these workers you kind of see where this is going to go already but um, 
So there, all these. So the main character is this guy who's just sort of flitting around with his friends. <clears throat> you know, he's just he's one of these rich people. And then for some reason, this this lady from down below in the city, she brings up this like, like. I don't know, field trip of all these, like, orphans. No, no, that, not orphans, just poor kids, right? Because they, they have parents. They have these poor kids who, like, and and says, she, this is what your brothers do up here. And and then, like, everybody's just kind of like, oh, get away, gross. Except for this main character guy. Um, his name's John. Uh and he he's like oh i think i love you huh and he does all this stuff where he's just like grabbing himself we're talking primo melodrama here i mean we're not even like this is like this is like bury the needle levels of of melodrama because every single time somebody looks at somebody they like grab themselves by the chest and just it gets kind of insane so, so this guy, he goes to, he, because he's, he's curious about this girl, he eventually goes and talks to his dad. And his dad is the guy who, who runs the whole city. He's like the leader of the, the whole city. And he goes, he sneaks, so the, the kid sneaks down to the, the, the workers and he sees like all the shit that's going on and he sees that this terrible thing has happened and he goes to tell his father and his father is like it's pissed at this other guy for not telling him that the accident happened sooner so he fires him and then but then john is like don't worry about it we'll i'll i'll, I'll work it out you just go home and um we'll figure this out and so john then like he like goes down and Oh man, this is so hard to describe unless I describe every minute detail. He like basically switches with this guy so that he can he can be a worker downstairs and the guy will have his clothes and go and, and live upstairs and everything will be fine. They're all going to meet at this dude who got fired's apartment. Okay, so he does this, and he does that famous scene where he has to like, he has to like work the clock thing, where he's like gotta move the hands of the clock to wherever the the, the light is going. And then I'm, I'm boring myself even explaining this, but it's not boring. That's the thing. Every minute is like just this exciting uh, image. Um, and so eventually he meets the girl, and the girl. The girl is like actually this sort of minister and she's like per saying that there's going to be this thing called a mediator who's basically Jesus Christ. <laughs> there's a lot of religious symbolism in this movie. Who's basically Jesus Christ who's going to come and be the heart between the brain and the hand. Which is the brain being, you know, the executives and everything that run the city and the hand of the people that actually do the city, do the work downstairs, and so they need to have a mediator, and so she thinks that John is a mediator, then, so he falls in love with her, and she falls in love with him, and they're really excited, but then the father sees all this happening, and he goes to this crazy scientist, and the scientist has that robot, the robot who looks like C-3PO, except it's a chick, and he, oh my gosh, already nine minutes, and he then goes to him and then he says, make make the robot in the image of this girl. So he makes a robot in the image of the girl. And, and so she starts telling all these lies and doing all these things and does this like sexy dance. It's like, it's weirdly sexy. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's just, it's just, it's, there's something wrong with it, but I can't tell you what it is, but she's just, you know, gyrating and doing all this stuff and wearing little pasties, and it's like, gosh, this is really risque, and she drives all the men 
uh, upstairs wild and then she goes downstairs and she drives all the 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 people who the workers to go and start destroying the machines the reason she does that is so that the father can then bring in force he can have an excuse to bring in force and just destroy all the pe the workers and start over because he's thinking that they're getting a little bit they're getting a little bit mouthy or getting funny ideas uh, so but then they actually do go and destroy all the, the, the machines and for some reason like the, the father didn't realize that if he destroys the machines the city will stop working because he gets all freaked out and he's like oh biting his biting the back of his hand and like because he doesn't realize that that this was gonna I don't know why he didn't think this was gonna happen I mean this is pretty much obviously the only thing that could happen and so the, the, the city is basically drawn to a standstill um, they the, 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 the guy John and the girl they have to rescue all the kids from the, the downstairs part because they, they it floods and okay so this doesn't sound all that exciting. Then he fights the robot man, and the robot gets burnt up, and it laughs, and it says, Ah, ha, ha, look what I've done to your stupid city. <laughs> because I'm a robot, and I hate people. And then, and, uh, so the, he fights, and he kills the scientist, and then there's, like, this big final hullabaloo, and it looks like everything's going to be terrible. But then... John is the mediator and he comes between the leader of the workers and his father and he makes him shake hands. Everything's okay. The end. Now, I don't think personally that there could be a worse summary of what, <laughs> of what, of what uh, Metropolis is about because I, I missed a bunch of stuff and like it really is like pretty but you know what now I'm just going to go on to the review because it's already been 12 minutes jeez louise um, okay so what did I think of Metropolis it was goddamn amazing is what it was um, really honestly uh, as far as like being one of the best silent films is it's without question um i've seen some other silent films and some of them are pretty well done but this is just above it's a huge like the undertaking that went into this um the
the special effects for the time are incredible like it's pretty much seamless and you see that this whole city kind of exists and most of it's like these beautiful matte paintings but it's like so well put together with the backgrounds and so well done that like there's just it's just incredible um uh, the story is a little convoluted but ultimately it's pretty damn good because you're telling this story this complicated story without any dialogue and the the character the main character is just this guy who who wants wants to do good actually i think he just wants to get laid at first he's just kind of like whoa this chick i like this chick better than all these crazy chicks that my father gives me uh so i think that's probably how it starts but he he eventually comes around and just becomes this hero and there's some heroic stuff in here and he's like climbing shit and like fighting at the top of like they just really just like pull no no punches with this thing they they they, they really really went balls to the wall well how do you like that that's a real good uh, that's very literary uh, it really went balls to the wall with <laughs> with with every single shot in this movie like they they did a melodrama does get to you after a while and you're like why is this taking so long come on dude just just like do it stop grabbing your chest and and like freaking out and everything and then but eventually once it like once you get used to the pacing of the movie you kind of realize that okay this works and this works and this works and this works so uh I, all i can say is that it was really really well done this is already 15 minutes um but uh, let me talk about the religious symbolism it was all kind of over the top because like obviously this guy was Jesus and like they pretty much used the Bible as every example for everything and and the and the the girl who the girl the robot that turns into a girl kind of like is like the whore of Babylon <laughs> and like they make a good case and it it really comes out and like it's the seven deadly sins and all this stuff but it's kind of like thrown in your face that's i think more product of its time coming out of germany in the 1920s than anything else you know they had to have that kind of thing in there but i i it didn't bother me too much i think what really the the main thing that that you get from that is just that it's it's a movie about about connecting well it's it's a movie about not doing communism but connecting the two people with with a heart so there is there is no you have to you have, the, the head and the hand has to be mediated by a heart which is a nice thought i mean it's not you know they they do ahead and the workers smash the means of production and all that but like it's not it's not straight up communist it's it's more like hey can't we just kind of work together to make this better and i don't know they they seem to be off to a good start so okay Hopefully this wasn't too boring, but that's my um, Metropolis uh, review. I'm going to give this one four out of five crazy robot chicks because the only reason I'm taking anything away is because some of the melodrama I wasn't too crazy about. Some of the religious stuff I thought was a little over the top and uh, some of the... Uh, I just didn't like the look of a couple of the actors. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to throw my opinion in there. But they're long dead. <laughs> so I don't think that they're going to mind that, that I don't think anything of them. Uh, so anyway, that is my review. 
And uh, as always, I love you. Look out for there's It's going to be a trilogy, so uh, the next one is either going to be The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari or Modern Times by Charlie Chaplin. I know which one I want to do, but I'm going to go ahead and put a, a thing up and see if like people uh, want to would rather see one or the other uh, for the next one. But uh, okay, I love you, and I'll see you in the funny papers.